Hey, Forthead. <laughs> you. Oh, me. Yeah. Yes. I'm trying. I'm I, working on being more polite these days. I thought that one was silent. <laughs> Aren't they all supposed to be? <laughs> All right, as we navigate raising children and grandchildren, one of the most important lessons we impart on younger generations is simple. Always be kind. Being polite in a world that isn't always sunshine and rainbows and unicorns and bags of kittens can go a long way, but sometimes we as adults fall short. It's important to be polite, to cultivate meaningful relationships as we grow as individuals. And though our lives and friendships might change as we get older, the desire to be the best versions of ourselves should not. So today on Men Are So Smart, easy things. What you do? I'm just gasped. Oh, I thought you farted. <laughs> no. <laughs> easy things to do so you can be more polite is next, Ronnie. Okay, we'll do it next. Appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Hello there. Hello there. Welcome to Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Thank you for watching today. We appreciate your time. On the show, our topic today, easy things you can do to be more polite. And in this crazy effed up world we live in, you can, you can make it better in just even a small way by being polite. So we have some examples. Yeah. Ready? So first. Yes. Say please and thank you. Say please and thank you. My God. We were taught this at three and four years old. Mm -hmm. And you know what millennials say? You go, hey, thank you. I appreciate you doing that. Uh, yeah, no, no problem. Right. They don't say thank you. Or you're welcome. Right. Yeah. No problem. Yep. Uh, one of the best life lessons we learn from our parents at an early age is always say please and thank you. Uh, this is a rule that stands the test of time. Thanking someone for an act of kindness or for simply doing their job can brighten their day. Sure. And yours in return. Absolutely. And it takes zero effort. You know, I do that with the customers sometimes. I'll say, you know what? You made that so easy for me to get you the right thing. Yep. You asked me all the right questions. I appreciate what you just did. Yep. It goes a long effing way. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right, next up, hold the door for stranglers. <laughs> strangers. Oh, I'm sorry, Ronnie. Yeah, strangers. Should you still hold the door open for someone? Yes. The answer to this modern etiquette question is indeed yes. Holding the door open for the person behind you is a simple yet kind act. We all have places to be. Your place is just as important as mine. But if you see someone behind you, especially someone with a stroller or limited mobility, taking a few extra seconds to hold the door open is a common courtesy. And again, it's like zero effort. Yeah. yeah. Although, you know what? Sometimes I wonder, like, not that I've ever been to a Starbucks, yeah. but if I open the door for someone and they walk in ahead of me, then they're going to be in line ahead of me. That is true. Yeah, there is that to consider. You know, maybe you just hold the door so they can grab it. Right, yeah. Still, that counts, right? I, it definitely does. So hold the door for stranglers. <laughs> this one, tip when dining. So we just did a show yeah. about this. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's true. There are plenty of things customers can do that servers might hate, but refusing to leave a tip after sitting and dining at a restaurant goes beyond being impolite. It's just rude. It is. Uh, if a server does their best to guarantee each dish is top notch and everyone is satisfied, the least a customer can do is leave behind a tip to thank them. Uh, next time you're rummaging through your pockets, wondering how much you should tip a barista, you, there's always there's an app. If you really, if you really don't know, uh, for me, I double the tax and round up ends up to about 18 to 20 percent. What do you tip a pizza guy? Uh, we never get pizza delivered. Oh. So we go, I, I can't even remember the last time we had a pizza delivered. Really? But, but I think five bucks would be the minimum. Yeah, I think you're right. Large, extra large pizza or something like that, five yep. bucks is good. All right, so tip when dining is another way to be courteous and polite. Next up, greet your neighbors. Oh, I'm drawing a line here. 
Uh oh. <laughs> no. We just did a show on neighbors too. Oh yeah. I told you about mine. Yeah. A neighbor can be someone who lives next door or a coworker who sits nearby. Either way, saying hello <laughs> is a great way to be polite and potentially make a new friend. Which reminds me, I have jury duty coming up. Making oh, small talk like, you know I hate small talk, Ronnie. Yeah. I'm going to be stuck in a room with a bunch of people and not knowing anybody. All day long. All day long. Making small talk like a pro is a gift for some and an acquired skill for others. But asking someone about their day is a great place to start. Yeah. How was your day? I do that with my grandson. Tell me about your day today. I always want to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, participate in conversations. I went to cars and coffee event yesterday, mm -hmm. and I have a very good friend from our from the sheriff's department who's almost always there. And I saw him, and I thought I don't want to get started talking to him because we talked for half an hour. I wanted to walk through, look at the cars, and then go back and talk to him. Mm -hmm. I met another guy. His name was Louie, by the way. I never made it back to my friend. Oh, uh, so but you made a new one. But I made a new friend. He's an old. He's got an old Corvette. It was, oh, sweet! Oh, it's beautiful. Corvette people. We kind of like this. we click up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Some people prefer to tend to themselves, and that's fine. If brainstorming the perfect thing to say at a social gathering makes you anxious, no need to stress yourself out. But if you're included in a discussion or someone asks you for your opinion on a matter, you should try your best to add a few thoughts to the conversation. And don't worry. You know, people worry about, well, if I say something, it's going to make me look stupid. Right. Well, if that's the worst thing that happens to you today. Maybe you are stupid. God bless. <laughs> God bless you. And people are going to figure it out anyway. Yeah, so. eventually. Uh, put your phone away. Oh. My wife and I argue over this all the time. Uh, at her job, she's constantly on the phone. She does phone service. So she can't really check her cell phone very often or, I mean, her time is uh, uh, all, you know, set aside for this. And anyway, uh, when we go out to eat, you know, I have to make her put her phone over by the... She's making up for lost time. Exactly. So we get it. It's the 21st century. Right. And it's harder than ever to put your phone down. But scrolling through your phone while at a dinner table or on a date is one of the period, most period, common period, etiquette, mistakes, you can make period. If you absolutely have to take a phone call, and I honestly can't think of one. Uh, I can't think of one phone call that I got to take unless, yeah. well, I don't want to go there. Uh, excuse yourself and step into another room to avoid disrupting others. Not to mention the fact you're probably not going to be able to hear. Right. So, uh, especially me. Uh, but you know what? Take your call in a different room. No one needs to hear your conversation. It's rude. This one is kind of along those same lines. Use headphones. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if your playlist includes every chart-topping song. No one wants to hear it played loud on the elevator or on public transportation. Or at the gas station. <sighs> Or in line for yeah. at the grocery store. Uh, the same goes for phone calls. Plug in a pair of headphones and enjoy your personal matters privately. I think that's it. Privately. Okay, here's another example. Let's say you're going to O'Reilly Auto Parts. Yep. Okay, and you pull up and you park in your space. You get out of the car and your phone rings. Get back in your car and take the call in there. Do not take the call into the store. Yeah. First of all, you know how you don't realize you slow down when you're driving, when you take a phone call? Yeah. It's the same thing. You don't realize how, how loud you're talking. And everybody can hear it. Your conversation does not belong in that store. No one wants that. Why do people continue to do it, Ronnie? You know, and what really nuts me up is when you're in inside of a store and somebody's in the checkout line mm -hmm. and they're at the cashier right. still talking on their phone. So rude. It slows up the line for everybody else behind you. And what you. if I have to ask you a question? Right. Yeah. For whatever reason. Do you want a bag? Y yeah. Paper or plastic? Your card is expired. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? 
All right. All right. Oh, this one? Oh. I know, Ronnie. You're, this is your stickler for this. Be on time. Mm -hmm. uh, boy, I'm, I think I've finally driven this home to my son. Uh huh. Finally. How many years did it take? 22? It, it, took, it took longer than that. Uh -huh. Uh, William Shakespeare said it best, better three hours too soon than a minute too late. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Bill. Uh, you call him Bill, you guys are Oh, yeah, we're, we're like that. Like yes. Yeah. Uh, three hours early may be a bit overkill. Yeah, Bill. Definitely. Thanks, Bill. Uh, in fact, if you ever show up three hours early here, don't wake me up. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been about a half an hour earlier than I was actually today. <laughs> but hey, the message is clear. Just be on time. Yeah. Uh, and if you're running late, Give the people you're meeting a heads up so they know your whereabouts. Okay, so now look, I know that you're a stickler for this one, so I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Okay. Um, first of all, what is it that you say about five okay. minutes? Five minutes early is on time. Uh, on time? On time is, is late. late. Late is unacceptable. And you know what? My son's just recently had a few dental appointments, and... Told them, they're not going to wait for you. No. If you miss your appointment by five minutes, they might be able to squeeze you in, but you're going to be sitting in that waiting room for a And they're going to teach you for a, a minute. Yeah. They really are. You won't be late for a dentist appointment more than once. Yeah. You don't want that. No. All right. So be on time. And they may not even use Novocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I know a song about that. Uh, don't stare. Ooh. It isn't polite. No. When we see someone who looks different than us, maybe physically challenged, our first instinct might be to stare. Someone in a wheelchair or with a common skin disorder might draw looks, but don't join the crowd. More often than not, starting a conversation with the person is the best route to go. Just be thoughtful in what you say because there might be questions you didn't know were rude, but that's the only way to learn. Yep. And you know, I mentioned jury duty. The last time I was on jury duty, um, I met this girl. And it, I mean, it wasn't like I went out of my way to meet her. We just were seated next to uh, one another and we started talking and I found out that she was a stripper. Oh. A stripper doing jury duty. Wow. <laughs> More power to her. Thank you. Well, see, here's the thing. I don't. I've never known a stripper. Yeah. I, I don't know any. I, and so I had a lot of questions that I wanted to ask. Did you know my friend, friend girlfriend Brenda? Because you may have met one before. I don't think so. No, I'm just kidding. No, okay. <laughs> Your girlfriend? She was a I don't think you want to be talking about that right here, Ron. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I felt I was. It was fascinating to learn about what her life was like. A whole and different culture. It is, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, if I hadn't have said, hello, I might not have yeah. ever learned that. Yep. Yeah. And we became kind of fast friends for a while we were on jury duty. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty cool. She I'll was, bet you if you went to the vending machine, she always had ones. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling out of her bra. <laughs> Thought that was a little odd. Maybe even bordering rude. All right, so don't stare. Okay, and this next one. Oh, right the same. Don't talk about other people behind their back. Oh, we're all guilty of that. At some point, uh, other than being one of the many habits of toxic people, mm -hmm. gossiping and talking about people behind their backs is wrong. Uh, making up lies or spreading another person's information is a breach of trust and a sure way to ruin a friendship. My thing is, if I couldn't, and I, many times with people, I'm brutally honest. Uh, I know I, you are with me sometimes. Yeah, too. I, I try not to hold back because people, I think, appreciate the truth, even if sometimes it's a little bit hurtful. Yeah. But I wouldn't tell, if, if I wouldn't tell something to your priest or your grandparents about you, I wouldn't tell it to you either. You know, like, oh yeah, dude's got a, you know, a crazy meth ha habit or something. Uh, he talks to strippers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You need to return your phone calls. <coughs> all of y'all. All y'all. Uh, all of y'all <laughs> need to return your phone calls. Now, me, I'm not going to, but that's not the point we're talking about you. <laughs> In this day and age, phone calls are rare. Yeah, like I like it. 
Sending a text is a quicker way to get a message across, and it's usually just as efficient, but not always. But if someone does give you a call, it's polite to make the effort to return it. Yeah, well, I agree. Unless you're trying to prove a point, and you, you're not taking calls True from that. that person. You're ghosting somebody. Exactly. Yeah. 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 All right, these next two I think we can put in the same same category. Okay. RSVP to events and write thank you notes. So having... Handwritten thank you yeah, notes. Yeah, having just hosted a wedding a little more than a year ago, RSVPs, huge. Yep. Absolutely huge. And it's timely. Money. It's money. They've got to be timely. When you get one, answer it immediately. Most times they're going to come in a self-addressed stamped envelope. If it's a formal event or have a phone number... Look at your calendar and respond. And then after the event, if you get gifts, sit down and write thank you notes. Uh, it takes literally maybe one minute per thank you note. It does not have to be elaborate. Uh, a simple thank you for the whatever you gave me. Thank you so much for that present. I'll use it the rest of my life. Yep. And send them out. Send them out immediately. We were... Just recently, we found out that it's appropriate or it's acceptable to send out thank you notes for a wedding up to one year later. Oh, you didn't know that? I did. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, and trust me, my my daughter and my new son-in-law took it almost that far. Um, Kids today. To me. Get off my lawn. It seems, hey, after a year, I've even forgotten what I gave somebody yeah. at their wedding. Mm -hmm. So, you know what? I, I'd say just send them out. Take take a few minutes. All right. I'll tell you what. We're going to wrap up with this one, Ronnie. And I think this applies to all of life, not just being polite. Dang. Keep your hands to yourself. What are you saying? Dear. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping your hands to yourself is one of the many manners every child should learn and adults should never forget. A pregnant woman with an adorable baby bump oh, dang. or a happily squealing child might inspire you to reach out in a moment of excitement, but it's rude to touch anyone without their permission. Yeah, very. It's also a quick way to spread germs, see? Mm, yeah. Uh, keep your hands to yourself. Here's, here's, here's the thing. Even at work, people know I need my personal space. Okay? Do not invade my personal space. That's all I'm saying. Right. See that stapler? That's mine. Don't use that. Okay? <laughs> Germs. Well, and in my, at my work, the sheriff's department, it's also a good way to end up sitting in the HR department. <laughs> yeah. Yep. No shoulder rubs. Nope. Nope. None uh, of that stuff is acceptable. You know what? And boy, it was a lot different when I first started. I started with the sheriff's department in the mid '80s. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot different. A whole lot of touching going on. Yeah. I mean, uh, I started out working in the jails, and I would often see record officers giving shoulder massages to other record officers. Like, and even then, I thought. It doesn't seem appropriate in the workplace. In a workplace, but you know what? On your lunch break or something, if if somebody wants to do that and then somebody else wants to reciprocate, that's okay. But you know what? Right there in the workplace, sitting at their desk, I don't know. It just does. It seems kind of wildly inappropriate. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, where I work, we had a girl. Who, she no longer works there, not because of this, but um, she was a millennial. And I think the, she was like 27 when she started working there and 29 or so when she finished, because she just turned 30 this year. Uh, she and I were very close. Our desks were about two apart. She, when she would walk by my desk, she would always massage my neck and shoulders. Now, here's the thing. If a man did that, there's your trip to HR, right? Woo! In a heartbeat. But why then is it okay for a woman to do it to a man? No. Yeah. Double standard. Either way, avoid it. Yeah. That's our best advice right there. 
Yep. And that'll wrap up this episode of Men Are So Smart. We're so glad you joined us. We hope you had a laugh, maybe even learned something today. Uh, if you did, please give the show a like and maybe even share it. That would be nice. We're trying to up our subscriber number, and that would be very helpful if we could get the word out a little bit more. Uh, our website's pretty cool. It's uh, menaresosmart.com. I almost said 1015. <laughs> menaresosmart.com. I sometimes have to juggle that. Uh, and also, our email addresses are lou at menaresosmart.com. And Ronnie. Actually, just Ronnie. Yeah. There's no Ann. No. Ronnie at Ronnie. menaresosmart.com. Yeah, you can reach us there 24-7, 365. Yep. yep. And now... Find us on iTunes. Oh, man. That is the coolest thing. That's pretty cool. Our show in podcast form. Yeah. You gotta love that. Man. Except you don't get all of this. Well, but, you know, for some people, that's a bonus. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> for me, with you, it is. <laughs> all right. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And this has been a very polite episode of Men Are So Smart.